You are watching the Canadian Public. And over 600,000 young Americans are stepping hopefully out into the world this year, looking for their first jobs. The same number faced a similar problem last year. An equal number will face it next year. What chance have these boys and girls in a world already staked out? Now that the land front is closed, good is morning, there no son. longer a Have a good sleep? Oh, home? like a log. Will they find welcome or closed signs on the gateways of opportunity? Blah, blah, blah. What can blah. a young can generation look breakfast? forward to? Wait a minute, bud. What hope is there for youth in the world of tomorrow? The answers to these questions are vital to every man, woman, and child in the nation. They present grave problems to labor, commerce, agriculture, and industry. Their solution should be of primary concern to education and government for the quality of citizenship. You're telling us. State. The facts involved, however, are both difficult Sorry, and Sorry, Dad, I gotta do it. He's breaking my but heart. I should think you'd be interested in hearing about opportunities for young people. What opportunities? Say, do you know the motto of the last graduating class? Something lofty, no doubt. Yeah. WPA, here we come. That's super lofty. Well, I guess times change. I remember when I was your age, I... Sure, I know. You were working for a hardware job, and you kept right on till you saved enough to open your own store. Yes, and I don't see... Because times changed, like you said. We've got all the hardware stores we need, and all the grocery stores, all the doctors, all the lawyers, all the gas stations, all the everything. But it don't stand to reason that a country with our record could all at once lack openings for young fellas. No, you just try and get a job. Maybe it is difficult, but it's worse to be a quitter. Now, you've got years of school ahead of you, yet you let your friends talk you into believing you're licked already. Well, they know what they're talking about. Now, listen, son. I wasn't going to tell you this, but you're the reason we came here all the way from Indiana. You've heard all the talkers. Now I'm going to show you the doers. That's why I brought you and your mother to the fair. Holy smoke, the fair! I forgot where we were. Hey, Grandma! A couple of guys are starving out here. How's the job coming? Hold your horses, bud. We'll be ready in a minute. He sure do think a lot about his stomach. 
You probably had a good appetite yourself at his age, Elvira. Lord, Miss Harrison, if appetites was housed, I'd almost all a holler right now. <laughs> How's the table, Jane? Is it set? All set, Mother. Come on, everybody. Breakfast is ready. That's the best news I heard since I got here. Hi, Mom. Boy, am I hungry. I don't know which I've been looking forward to the most, the fair or your cooking, Mother. Don't pay any attention to him, Grandma. He says that to all the cooks. <laughs> well, you can't make a cook mad by liking a cooking. That's a good thing for a young man to remember. I'll say it is. That's how Dad got his corporation. Hey, that's not a corporation. That's private ownership. <laughs> <laughs> a man's entitled to a stomach at his age. <laughs> Anyway, it's nice to have my family with me again. Even if it took a World's Fair to get you here. Well, we thought you had your hands full with just one member of the family. Nonsense. Barbara's been a lifesaver. Really, she has. I'd have been pretty lonely here without her. Uh, how is she getting along with that art business she's studying? I don't know, Tom. It's over my head. I gave up when she told me pictures on calendars weren't art. I wonder what in the world's keeping her. Bad, your breakfast is ready. We're waiting for you. Well, we may be waiting, but I don't think it's noticeable. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Babs. Good morning, Mother. Good morning. Good morning, Grandma. Good morning, dear. And that's for a fresh little brother. That's a fine way to treat a guy that's come all the way from Indiana to see her. The fair, of course, had nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh. My, I never realized what a good-looking daughter I had. Hmm? Oh, pardon me, we had. Grandma, do you have to run an all-night lunchroom for our boyfriends like Mom did? No, there's only one, and I don't see him very often. Why, of course, Jim Treadway from back home. He's working at the fair. You couldn't do better, Babs. Jim's a fine boy. Chip off the old block. He's going places. Not with me, he isn't. What are you trying to do, get rid of me? Oh, Jim's a nice fellow, of course, only I'm not in love with him. But, Babs, I thought you had, you know, some sort of understanding. That was in high school. I was young then. I'm grown up now, and I have better judgment. When do we get our peep at your better judgment, kid? Well, I didn't know you were going with anybody else, Babs. Is it somebody we know? Now, Jane, there's plenty of time. We just got here last night, and you want to know everything before she even gets a chance to say hello. There's nothing to get excited about. I'm not in love. At least, I don't think I am. Oh, I was afraid something like this would happen. Oh, stop flying off the handle. I know all about it. Who is he, Babs? He's Nicholas Makarov, my art teacher. Oh, so you turned out to be a teacher's pet. I suppose you take him an apple. That will do from you, young man. Nick's been in America since he was a little boy. But he knows the world like, like we know Main Street. He's a genius. you like him. Oh, sure we will. Anybody you like is OK with us. Oh, I've got to be running along. I'm late. Uh, where will I meet you for lunch? Well, I thought it would be kind of nice if we looked up Jim Treadway first. His folks said he's working at the Westinghouse building. Supposing we all meet there. Babs, why don't you bring Mr. Mac, uh, your friend, along? We'd love to meet him. Sure, fetch him along, Babs. Well, all right, if he can get away. He's, he's awfully busy right now, but I'll ask him. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye -bye. Dad. Yes, sir. It's just what this family needs, an artist. Now maybe we can get the house painted for nothing.
herbarium to the playground of science. Hey, you Jim, how's the boy? Hello, Bud. The same old Bud. That's a new one, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it a beaut? Hello, Jim. Hello, Mrs. Harrison. How are you, Mrs. Middleton? Oh, Jim, it's so good to see you. You're looking fine. It's good to see you again. Hello, Mr. Middleton, how are you? Put it there, Jim. You're certainly a sight for sore eyes. It's sure grand to see somebody from the old hometown. When did you get in? Just last night. Your father and mother saw us off. They said if we didn't look you up the first thing, they'd never speak to us again. <laughs> Say, Jim, just what do you do around here? Are you a boss or something? Well, not exactly, but I'm... Well, I'm sort of backstop for the guys. When they can't answer a question, I take a crack at it. If I don't know it, I look it up, which is often. Gee, I didn't know you were that smart. I'm not, bud. But you see, before the fair opened, we took a special course of instruction to prepare us for the questions the company thought might be asked. Well, do they stick you very often? And how? <laughs> Why, just this morning, a lady asked me how long it would take to read the microfile in the time capsule. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we've been reading a lot about the time capsule. Could we take a look at it? Why, sure. We can get to it this way. Oh. <laughs> time capsule of cupoloi. Deposited on the site of the New York World's Fair on September 23rd, 1938, by the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company. If anyone should come upon this capsule before the year A.D. 6939, let him not wantonly disturb it, for to do so would be to deprive the people of that era of the legacy here left them. Cherish it, therefore, in a safe place. 5,000 years from now, the peoples of the future will look back on us as we look back on the early Egyptians and Babylonians. The time capsule down there is actually a message from our time to theirs. Those who open and study it will know more about us than any man living today. But Jim, how in the world do you know it'll last so long? Because the copper tools of the ancients have come down to us from even farther back. The capsule is made of a still better copper alloy called cupoloid. It's hard as steel and equal to pure copper and resistance to corrosion. Well, what I'm wondering is how anybody will know how to find it in the year. What was it? 69, 39? How to find it, what's in it. In fact, everything about it was printed in a book of record of the time capsule. It's on permanent paper and has been distributed throughout the world. To libraries, museums, lamasaries, monasteries, temples, every safe place imaginable. Well, who picked the stuff that was to go in it, Jim? A committee, aided by authorities in every field of science and the arts. It's a complete record of our civilization. Is this exactly like the capsule? Yes, and it's cut away so you can see how it's packed. These side cases show you the variety of things in there. <laughs> Look, there's a woman's hand. Well, ladies, that'll reveal a lot about us to future scientists. It sure will. They'll think we're nuts. <laughs> are these little reels the microfile? Yes. It's hard to believe, but on these small reels of film are reproduced all these books, papers, and magazines. It's a record of 10 million words and a 1,000 pictures. Well, how will they read them? A small microscope is included. But there are also instructions how to make a large reading machine. Also, how to make a motion picture projector for the three special newsreels. I suppose cloth and things like that are in it, too. Everything from samples of fabrics to a dozen different kinds of common seeds. I bet a nickel I know something that isn't in it. Mickey Mouse. You'd lose, bud. Mickey Mouse, Dick Tracy, Barney Google, they're all there. Even toys and money. Why, the list of contents alone takes up 17 pages of fine print. Boy, they weren't fooling when they made that capsule, were they? It's the brains of the world done up in a small package. And it's the most permanent exhibit at the fair. It'll still be here when the rest of this place is nothing but dust. That's remarkable. Have you got time to show some of the other sites, Jim? Or they can use. You men go along. Jane wants to write some postcards home. We'll look around and meet you later. Well, that's the writing room over there, the glass enclosed room. Perhaps you'd like to enter our letter writing contest. Letter writing contest? What's that, Jim? Well, both the folks who write and receive the best letters home from the fair each week are awarded cash prizes. The winners are announced every Sunday evening during our Letters Home radio program. See, see if you can get me the dope on that contest while you're over there. I might just as well have some of that cash as the next guy. <laughs> Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Bob? Well, they can't shoot you for trying. <laughs> well, it looks like the shop of old Watch the Bertie Schultz. Remember him, Jim? Six deluxe portraits for a buck. Well, you better take another look. He never had a camera like that one. That's a television camera. Holy smokes, does it work? Of course. You go down there, Mr. Middleton. You can see and hear Bud and a whole row of television receivers. You better be good. 
Uh, Bud, this is Frank Wells. Frank, this is Bud Middleton from the old home town. Hiya, Bud. Hiya. Now just act and talk naturally. Oh, is it going? It's on. Hiya, folks. This is Clark Gable Middleton speaking. As you can see, if you've got your television sets turned on. <laughs> what state are you from, Bud? Indiana, the greatest state in the world. And if Grover Whalen's listening in, New York's okay, too. <laughs> well, what do you think of the fair? Well, as a guy I once studied about said, I came, I saw, and I'm almost conquered. <laughs> How am I doing, Dad? <laughs> We call this the playground of science, but it really covers a lot of our normal research activities. Most of the exhibits are made so the visitors can operate them. Built-in watchmen, but what's it do? The bimetal discs like these are used for the control of current in our electric irons, refrigerators, and other home devices. They save you money by shutting off the current as soon as the right temperature has been reached. Well, that's a new one on me. They're used by the millions, only they're hidden in the appliances where you can't see them. Oh. Well, that's the time to See, Jim, don't you ever feel bad about passing up that chance to play pro football? Well, once in a while, I get the urge to plow into a line. But outside of that, there's more kick to this game. Oh, you don't have to kid an old friend of the family. I guess it must be pretty interesting. What gets under your skin about the search? is the attitude of the men in the labs. They work on the principle that nothing is impossible. You hear that, Bud? Oh, sure, but I don't believe it. Open your eyes, Bud. The proof's all around you. By the whole fair is a product of research. One can't help modeling at all the new things they're inventing every day. A company can't stand still under the American system of private enterprise. It has two ways to go, back or forward. If it can make better products than the other fellow, it moves ahead. If it can't, the other fellow gets a business. But in either case, the public benefits. You mean in better goods? Yes. That's where fellows like me come in. In our research labs, we have four main jobs. We must constantly improve our existing products. So more people will be enabled to buy them, we must try to lower their cost by cutting waste of effort and material. Then we must anticipate the demand for new products before people realize they need them. Well, that's only three jobs, Jim. I kept count. And the last is industrial prospecting. Like, well, like prospecting for oil or gold. Sometimes we hit gushers, like radio, mechanical refrigeration, or air conditioning. Then a hundred new industries spring up and thousands of new jobs are created and another boost is given to our standard of living. Just remember that, Bud. Well, here's something else that might interest you, Bud. Here's the oscilloscope. Talk or blow or whatever you did before into the mic, and you'll see a voice projected on the screen. Bob! Tell me, Jim, do you honestly believe that industry can make enough jobs in the future to take care of the young people that are coming along? I think the problem is going to be the other way around. Industry will make so many jobs, there won't be enough people to fill them. So you don't believe me, do you? Well, you sound like you're in cahoots with Dad. From all I You're heard... liable to hear anything these days. You're willing to sit back and let a lot of self-appointed leaders do your thinking for you. Yeah, well, they believe we're on the skids. Yes, and the men who built this fair believe the opposite. And what's more, they back up their belief with $200 million worth of facts. Well, maybe the other side would, too, if they weren't busted. And they'll stay that way till they learn that prosperity and pessimism don't travel together. But they're like you, bud. They don't like facts. Oh, I don't mind them, Jim. Good. Then I'll introduce you to a few. Come along. Wonderful, Nick. Beautiful. I guess we're a little early. What do you want to do? Anything but inspect this temple of capitalism. Oh, Nick. Look at them. Their eyes popping out of their heads. 
drooling over the very things that are taking away their jobs. Now, Nick, don't get all excited. My family thinks that America is a pretty swell place, and I don't want you to disillusion me. I know. I'm here to be exhibited. Mute, but beautiful. Don't say that, please. I want them to like you, to know you as I do. Did you tell them we're in love, that I want to marry you, that I've asked you a hundred times? Of course I haven't, Nick. It, it isn't like telling them that I've got a new hat. I, I have to do it gradually, the right time and the right place. But why all the strategy? We don't have to maneuver like a battery of tanks. We're not at war with your parents. This is between you and me. It isn't as simple as all that, Nick. Listen to me, Babs. If there's one thing in our lives that doesn't concern other people, it's our marriage. We can slip away after lunch, and by dinner time, you can be Miss Smeckle. Not so fast, Nick. Give me a chance to find out whether I really love you or not. Then if I do, all right. I want my family's blessings beforehand, not when they can't help themselves. Afraid of being cut off with the proverbial shilling, darling? No. Money doesn't count where love is concerned. No, no, uh, of course not. Here are some people who believe in finding out things for themselves. These boys and girls are all members of the science and engineering clubs. They're sponsored by the American Institute of the City of New York to encourage the scientific knowledge of young people. Movement spreading over the whole country. Now, this is the kind of a thing that appeals to me. Do these same kids stay here during the whole fair, Jim? No, there's constant rotation. Each group stays here only a short time. Altogether, about a thousand of them get a chance to use the lab. You know, Jim, the children seem to think that I'm an old fogey. But I just can't help believing that our welfare is rooted in character, not in panaceas. To me, systems don't seem to count half so much as the right kind of men and women like these kids are going to be. You can get my vote on that any day. No system can make up for bad citizenship. No, sir. Well, I think I'll go find Mother and Jane. I'll see you at lunch. All right, Mr. Middleton. Uh, I'd like to show Bud a few more things. He's a pretty hard fellow to convince. Yeah, but uh, I think he's weakening. So long, Dad. By the way, Bud, how's Babs? OK. Is she going to be here today? I heard her say she was coming out here for lunch. But you never tell about women. 